Hey guys, what's going on? Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be checking out Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi 4. So let's get started. So before we begin, I got a couple of people I want to mention, which is a huge part of this project. Now, first we have Amar, which is the guy who actually optimized the Windows 10 image to make it so it's actually runnable or usable on Raspberry Pi. We have Luke who actually takes the images. So for people like us who don't have Windows machines, we could actually just load the image into an SD card and get it up and running in seconds. Then we also have Pete Batard who actually created the patch to allow us to use more than one gig of RAM. That is the huge change in this whole thing. For the longest time up until last week, uh, we only had one gig of RAM usable on the Raspberry Pi 4 for Windows. And that still made it very uh, limiting. You, you really couldn't use it as well as you wanted to with only one gig of RAM. But like I said, since last week, uh, Pete has created a patch where you're actually allowed to use up to three gigs of RAM, which is huge. Now, I'm testing this on an eight gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4, but because of some issues where if you go past three gigs of RAM, a lot of stuff starts breaking, like the display drivers and all this other stuff. It just doesn't work past three gigs. So right now the limiting factor is three gigs of RAM, but with three gigs of RAM, Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi is absolutely usable. Also, not too long ago, we finally got the use of front port USBs. What I mean by that is before that, we only had access to the USB-C. So you had to use a USB-C hub just so you could connect the mouse and keyboard and all that other stuff. But now all four ports in front work. So we have now USB support. We also have more than one gig of RAM. And like I said, it is the time to really test this thing. What doesn't work right now is the internal Wi-Fi and the Ethernet adapter, as well as audio coming from the HDMI cable. Uh, we also don't have video hardware drivers, so we can't get hardware decoding. So we are still on software render as far as Windows go. So yeah, games wouldn't work very well on it. Anyway, let's check it out. All right, so my desktop looks a little funky with the pixelation and everything. That's because my capture card is only displaying at 720 but it's a 1080 video i don't know what's going on with it and i can't get it to like properly fix up i'll look at that later in the future but it could be because of this whole window thing anyway if i head over to task manager on first boot if you take a look at performance it's about one gig now that's because i have the ethernet adapter on and i did start up an application or two now on first boot with the three gigabyte patch it will be about 700 to 900 megabytes depending if you have an ethernet adapter hooked up or not now, if you actually run this on a one gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4, it will boot up with about 400 or 500 megabyte, which I'll show you right here. I still don't recommend using the one gigabyte because it's just very lack, very slow on it. Now, it is locked at 1.5. There is no speed stepping, so this does get a little bit warm. Uh, does overclocking help? I don't recommend overclocking in Windows 10, nor do the people in the Discord say so as well, because it's not needed. The bottlenecks everywhere else, like the memory card and stuff. And as of, say, 24 hours ago, or maybe a little bit more, they just released a new UEFI where you could actually boot from USB. Now, I've tested this, and I was able to boot it from USB, but I don't have a USB SSD adapter that will actually work with the Raspberry Pi 4, so I wasn't able to test it on the SSD, but it does work on the USB boot. Furthermore, uh, you could see everything is very responsive. I could just click on something and it'll work, and I did install a lot of applications beforehand, like Word, Excel, and browsers and stuff like that. So to test it out, I'm gonna head over to Microsoft Edge browser, and I'll just check out some, let me go to Google. Uh, I'm feeling lucky. I'm feeling adventurous. Let's see what I could browse. And as you can see, the website loads pretty quick, just like any other Raspberry Pi, if you were to load a website. And I do recommend using Edge because Edge is like kind of baked into the system where it works really good. Uh, if I was to test out YouTube, now audio does work, not through the HDMI, but only through the 3.5 millimeter jack. But I don't have anything hooked up to it, so you won't hear any audio, but I know the audio does work. Now YouTube loaded pretty quick. The videos load pretty quick. Uh, I, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I'm waiting, for, why isn't this skipping the ad? The ad's playing, but it's not skipping. Weird. Anyway, yeah, YouTube does work. I'm gonna close out of that. And uh, other applications like Steam, VLC Media Player, and I also installed Steam Command just to make sure that that works. Now, just to test out something, we're gonna head over to Word. 
And keep in mind, this is actually uh, has the ability to run x86 applications on this ARM devices. So even though Word is an x86 or 32 bit application, it runs just fine. It runs actually pretty good for what it is. And if I was to check out the performance, see 200 megs of RAM extra that it's taking. It's using the CPU usage. This is a test. Works pretty well over here. Yeah, applications like this would work. Again, it's only 32 bit. So if you're gonna try to run 64 bit applications, uh, yeah, that's not gonna happen. And also uh, you could actually run stuff off the Microsoft store. Now I did manage to install uh, Netflix, but Netflix doesn't work not the app itself, but I was able to install it. That's the whole point. And I was able to get this to run. But Microsoft applications uh, do install. You're gonna have to do some trial and error just to see if it's gonna work on your installation or not. And there we have it. Store opens up. If you wanted to download something, you could just click on it and download. Now I did manage to get some older titled games to work like SimCity 3000 or X2 The Threat. And anything that's basically DirectX 9, I was able to get to work. And obviously, because we don't have graphic drivers for this guy, everything is going to be via CPU. So if I was to open SimCity 3000, uh, you might see the CPU pop up like crazy because it's trying to run this. And it's trying to emulate the video and stuff. But yeah, it, games do run, just very low end games. And I don't really recommend playing games on this guy anyway. If you're going to run Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi, you're going to use it for applications or office applications that you can't normally install on a Linux distribution. So starting new game, let's check this out. Loads pretty well. You see the CPU usage going up. RAM still 200 megabytes. I'm going to accept this terrain. Okay. Let me build some stuff and let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, let's build a power plant because we always need power, right? So power plant. There you go. Let's build some roads so we could have some roads to drive on. And we'll build some commercial product. Commercial, right? Commercial is yellow. Yeah, there you go. And let's see if that's going to work. Let me hit play. Speed up everything. Come on. People move in. There you go. Now we got some commercial buildings and smog. All right, I'm done testing this out. I'm also gonna show you guys X2 the threat and I'm gonna have a clip playing right over here. And on full screen, it's absolutely unplayable. I couldn't even get through the navigations correctly. But if I switched it over to window mode, you could see it's like cropped up on the top, but I'm actually able to play it a little. It's like doing two to three frames per second, but at least I could get through the menus and get into a game. And you could see if I'm moving, it's. It, it runs, that's that's the whole purpose. It's not gonna be great, but it runs and it also pins my CPU, so I can't do anything else other than that. I mean, I'm pretty sure if I lower the resolution or do something, I might be able to get the game to run a little bit better, but yeah, it runs. Uh, as far as Steam Command goes, I know you guys were asking a while back when I was doing this for the Raspberry Pi 3 if Steam Command works. And if I open Command Window here, Steam Command, verifying it's running and whatever you guys want to do with steam command if you guys know about it you could use it on here it does allow me to run it i am able to log in uh, i'm not going to log in now but see steam there you go i'm going to exit out of that so if you guys are interested in running steam command on windows 10 it does work uh their vlc media player this one is a patched version so it allows you to run 1080 at 60 frames per second. And there's also a thing where you could run it at 720 at 60 frames per second, but it would lose, it loses quality if you're on 1080. So I would recommend turning it off. What you would do is go into tools, preferences, head over to input codecs and turn this to none. If you turn it to all, it's gonna put this fix where it will run 1080, 60 frames per second, but it's gonna be like glitchy. So I'll show you. If I was to do a 1080, video let me close this and reopen that um, i do have something here video and let me just drag this over and if i was to run a 1080 video you see that glitchiness that's what happens if you're gonna have that plug in so i would recommend turning it off uh yeah it, it runs really smooth it's very responsive i got a lot of applications to work um, right now on this version, you actually can't activate Windows. I don't know why you would want to, but you can't. 
on the next version that he's releasing, which will be very soon, that will have activation availability. He's actually optimizing the Windows 10 image to the point where we're removing icons from like Windows 3.1, which is still stored in Windows 10 for some odd reason. Anyway, if you guys are interested, I'm gonna leave a link down to the Discord. Please be respectful. It's not my Discord, he manages it, but he has all the information on how to install this guy, where to get the images, what you need to do. Because this installation process is ever so changing and the updates are changing so rapidly, that um, yeah, I didn't cover the install process. It's all on his Discord. You just follow his instructions and you should be able to get everything up and running. If all else fails, uh, Luke has an image where you could just burn right into a, a SD card and it'll work right away. But yeah, again, I'll leave a link down in the description below for his Discord. That way you guys can get this up and running on your Raspberry Pi as well. Now I did manage to test this on one gig, two gig, four gig, and eight gigabyte. I managed to get the patch working for one, four, and eight but on the two gigabyte version, it would crash. I don't know how, what I did or not. Anytime that I try to run the RAM fix on the two gigabyte version, it would just blue screen. So keep that in mind. And this should also work on Raspberry Pi 3. I haven't tested it myself, but Amar says it works on Raspberry Pi 3. So I assume it's gonna work on Raspberry Pi 3. Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.